All right, guys, here we go. What a treat. We have um, two incredible people. We have the Mike Ferry, who's going to join us here for an exclusive one-on-one, -on -one, um, which I'm not going to lead. My privilege will actually be to introduce the person that's going to engage with him on this live broadcast um, right here in the Be Different group. Um, this is an amazing group, by the way, the Be Different Mastermind group here on Facebook. We're bringing real content on a regular basis. If you love this, go ahead and drop a like, invite your friends, let people know. With fur without further ado, I'm going to bring on Tina Cole, who's going to interview Mike Ferry. Um, Tina is not only one of the sharpest agents in the country, you're going to notice immediately her level of professionalism, but here's what I'm going to say. Okay, this $100 million producer out of Raleigh, North, North Carolina, she didn't just end up being this way. Now, granted, she was born awesome, sure. But she, what you're going to see when you, when you look and you see the polish and you see the skill set, well, she is, has been uh, one of Mike's you know, the pet students, right? One of the, one of the best, most, de most dedicated students of Mike's for years. And so now you're going to be introduced to Mike. A lot of you will know him already. A lot of you don't. This might be your first introduction. So wherever you stand, the main message is this. If you want a life like Tina's, commit yourself to education, commit yourself to professionalism and excellence on an ongoing basis. She learns and, and dedicates herself just as much to polishing that skill set now as she did years ago. So hopefully that's you. Without further ado, I'm going to bring up here um, the one and only. Tina Cole, and nice to see you, by the way. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So this is going to be fun. I'm going to do away with myself. The audience doesn't want me here. They want you. They want Mike. And I'm going to pull my note, my notepad out here, take notes, and I'm just excited. Thank you so much for bringing this here, by the way. You could have brought this anywhere across the internet, and you chose the Be Different Mastermind group for this. So here we are, one of our moderators. Um, in the group, Tina Call out of North Carolina at EXP Realty. Thank you, Mr. Dan Beer. I appreciate it. All right, I'm excited for our guest, my mentor. Oh, there he is. Hello, Mike. How are you? Great. Yeah. So, for for those of you that don't know Mike, um, you know, I I think everyone should know Mike if they don't know Mike. And and here, I'm just gonna say. You know, you changed my life uh, 12 years ago, and you have been a real estate coach and trainer for 45 years. And in many ways, people coin you as the first modern real estate coach. So you took on the task of educating colleagues and educating the entire industry. That that's that is that is in online for anyone to read, and and I believe it now after being with you for for 12 years. So welcome to our group, and uh, thank you for joining us. Well, no, thank you. This I'm having a lot of fun talking to people that I wouldn't otherwise get to see. Example, right here with your group. So I appreciate it a lot. And I'm always happy to know that uh, there are still some people out there that follow common sense like you and I advocate so much. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know we've got 30 to 40 minutes together. I want to make this powerful for our agents. We have 9,000 agents in this group, Mike. And so many of them are just, they were blowing up our phones and so excited to get in the group to watch you today. So I've written down many questions. I have a script. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote down my questions so we could be powerful today. Um, so, so many things are changing. I mean, just the fact that you're here today with us virtually, um, our whole world has changed almost overnight. And I think, you know, a lot of agents are left feeling um, unsettled, uncertain, you know, not only the agents, but the public. And so our goal today and in this group is to elevate agents, help bring them knowledge. Um, and so my first, first question is, you know, right now, um, you know, many feel that, you know, the world as we know it has ended, but based on your experience in the last, you know, 50 years, how will this economic adjustment be different than the last correction that we saw 08 through 12? Um, and what do, what do agents need to do to thrive through this? What's well, your opinion? I, I think there's several factors in play that you and I recognize. And that number one factor is, you know, like every disaster of any type, this too shall pass. Yes. We don't know how quickly, we don't know how soon. We all, of course, hope for the best. 
Um, I'm not sure that Easter Sunday is the day of passing, but it's not the passing we would like to see. And I'm not sure that June 1st is the passing time. Uh, we have some good friends in Italy that have been experiencing this for about two and a half months. Wow. And they're doing well, they're surviving. And in fact, I talked to the Bocellis this morning early and you know their life is not what it used to be, but their life is moving forward. So I think the biggest thing we have to look at is the agents that have taken the time to keep developing and strengthen their mindset are going to go through this at a much better pace than the agents that are living their life based on fear. Um, I had an interesting interview a couple of days ago, Tina, um, one of the many online newspapers, and I did not recognize the name because I don't read the newspaper. Um, she said to me, what is the biggest challenge agents face today? I said, fear. Yeah. And she said, fear of what? I said, everything. The unknown is the biggest fear they have. So the agents that have a strong mindset, the agents that have strong sales skills, the agents that can really understand the value of communication, with the prospects, the buyers and the sellers, the agents that have some understanding, some empathy, some sympathy. And that's, you know, you and I both know that is not Mike Ferry when I say that. Sure. But two weeks ago, I had to change how I thought about how we approach people because mm -hmm. the truth is they are scared. So um, I, I think that really the, the key to success is advanced communication, more communication with our prospects than ever before. Um, we're going to talk about maybe lead follow up in a minute for a minute, and we'll talk about some things we can do to be the calming force in every single conversation. But, it, you know, the conversations are starting today with, are you healthy? Is your family OK? Is there anything I can do to be of service to you versus right. when, versus when do you plan on moving? Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's a mindset shift, which is really important. But you, you and I practice that key word called versatility. Yes. That's the key to any relationship or any business, the ability to adapt quickly to any new type of environment we deal with. I, I will say this to you, Tina, and, I, and you will understand this. The people I'm most concerned about are the ones that started in real estate after 2012 because they've never been through anything before of substance. We've right. been through so many things in a long period of time. I mean, I think about 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, You'll get a kick out of this. I don't think I've shared this with you, but in 1971 in December, mm -hmm. I had three, three transactions close in December because I was an agent. Right. All three were at 18 and a half percent interest to the buyers. Wow. Now, now can you imagine announcing to your agents tomorrow, new interest rates, 18. Right. <laughs> you know, they'd, be, they'd be taking out guns and shooting themselves. Exactly. So it, it, everything is perspective, you know, everything is trying to understand the circumstances of today. Mm -hmm. Everything is sitting back and taking a deep breath and saying, I've got people that do need to sell or do need to buy. So how do I help them go through that transition of selling their home or buying a new one? So it, it's a mindset and skills issue. I, yeah. I, wish I wish I could say it was more advanced than that, but mindset and skills are the name of the game. Yeah. And before when we were asking sellers, you know, um, you know, may I take you through this process? You know, before it was the sales process. And now, you know, some of the conversations are, may I take you through the showing process now and what steps we're taking to to deal with our health crisis? So, you know, so you just add in logical, you know, words to the scripts um, and help people. So. So, yeah. And, and I think many agents right now, um, a they're either using it as an excuse, you know, maybe they just they don't want a prospect. And so therefore though, they're saying, well, I don't want to make calls right now because nobody wants to hear from me. And I'm finding that's the biggest challenge. Tina, how do you stay motivated to stay on the, on the phones? What do you say to these people? You know, and, and so what would you say that um, some of your best clients throughout the country that still are doing their job, that still are advisors at a high level, um, what are they saying above and beyond? How are you to these people? Are there any tips that you could give the audience to get their behind in action to get back on the phones well i think i think the biggest thing is to understand that more than ever before in our careers this little thing people are answering it for the first time oh, yeah a lot a lot it, it yeah because they don't have anybody to talk to um, right you know people are at like we're in the state of nevada and it's it's a home isolation state and 
you know, people say, gosh, I hope the phone rings. I don't care who it is. I'd like, yeah. to, have, I'd like to have a human conversation. So the first yeah. thing is accepting the fact that people will answer the phone. But the second thing is to understand that when they answer, they're still with, with some level of fear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I just received a text before we came online. And I have a, a dear, very close friend here in Las Vegas who's 86 years old. Mm -hmm. um, he, he writes a check, the bank bounces. He has so much money. Yeah. But he's been single now for probably 30 years. He's living in a beautiful big mansion. And he sends me a note this morning. The days, Mike, are too long. I don't know if I can deal with this. No. So I call him and I say, Fred, the days are long. So you have more time to enjoy the experience. The days are long. So you can talk to more of your friends. The right. days are long. You can have more communication with your eight grandchildren and your three great grandchildren. I said, yeah. this is a great opportunity for taking 86 years of your experience and sharing it with your kids. Yes. You gotta, could feel the smile on the phone when he said thank you. So yeah. our conversations are going to change. We're going to set up our calls a little differently. But see, here, here's the name of the game. People want to talk. They mm -hmm. want good news. Market statistics, um, market conditions, neighborhood conditions, what's happening in the community are all things that you're, you have a talented group of agents. I mean, I know because a lot of them are in our coaching. They, they have great skills. Yeah. Now they're just going to discuss and right. add some questions. Um, somebody asked me this morning, should I change the script? I said, well, depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. And then the answer is going to be yes. You yeah. know, it's going to be, you know, the old script from 1970 that Tommy Hopkins taught us, do you want to sell your home? No. Uh, yeah ended the conversation and then the Mike Ferry version is when do you plan on moving softens the blow but now I'm saying you're going to start with Tina is everybody in the family healthy everybody okay yeah. is, there yeah. any, is there anything I can help to relieve some of the fears and concerns that you have and that changes the dynamics of the conversation um, I, I was on a call with Bernie Gallerini yesterday who oh, you yeah. know mm -hmm. and Bernie's on the phone calling by owners and expireds and still listing 15, 16 homes a month, just as if it was two months ago, because yeah. he's up the phone. So, you know, I guess if I could say a real estate prayer, it would be, please, Lord, give them the courage to pick up the phone. Yeah. And when you think about it, you know, if a for sale by owner did not remove their listing, they still want to sell. Right. Yeah. And. And, and, and I, you know, I don't know where I got this, but I heard we're in a life event market. That's what I've been saying. And it's like, there are life events that are, are going to propel people to transact and we have to get in the way. Right. And so, and, and we need to get better. Our skills need to get better. So, so what is your whole take on everything going virtual? I mean, you, you are, you know, you have been doing, um, in person, you know, events your whole life. And now you've got this virtual shift overnight. I mean, here we are doing a virtual uh, conversation. Um, why is it that so many agents can't embrace change and, and why do they avoid change? And here you can jump on and, and virtually change in minutes, you know, how you're going to get to audiences. You know, it's interesting. Um, a good friend of mine named Mike Meadler is the president of Century 21. We've been friends for years and we kid about yeah. that, Mike and Mike. And I was talking to him last night and I said, who would have ever thought that Mike and Mike, you know, are going to drive to the airport and not get on a plane? I told, yeah. I told some minutes today that I'm going to drive by the Las Vegas airport, honk my horn, wave at the bellman and keep on coming and come home because I've been going to the airport every day for 45 years. Right. That's this is such a wonderful change for all of us to experience. But I think, Tina, the biggest thing with virtual is this. You know, I, I, I had a joke sent to me yesterday. There's some wonderful jokes about this whole terrible problem. Because remember, whenever there's high amounts of stress, a lot of jokes come out to try to relieve stress. Yeah. And the joke said that if you see a neighbor that you don't recognize, don't call the police. It's your neighbor without makeup on. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's some of the other sides of this problem. But you yeah. know, what, 15% of all transactions in the US have been done virtually for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Second home market, resort market, desert market in the in the West, 
the Florida market east and west coast, up in the Carolinas, New Jersey shore. Jeff Quinton. Oh yeah. I mean, he's he's been virtual ever since I met him when yeah. he was starting in real estate. So I think the biggest thing is to say to yourself, there's two issues: educating buyers, educating mm -hmm. sellers on the virtual side of the business. Do you, you and I both know, does a seller really want to spend an hour and a half listening to an agent drone on about how wonderful they are in person? No, not at all. But you can't do that this way. You got to get to the point and you got to get it done because they all have lives to live. So I think the efficiency of the virtual market is good. So your agents got to start educating their sellers mm -hmm. how the virtual showing going to take place, educating the buyers on a virtual presentation. But if you look at the listing side, which is the strength that you and your team have so well, we've always pre-qualified by phone. Always. We don't pre-qualify in person. We've always mailed or delivered a, a strong pre-listing package. Now we're emailing it. Right. Same, same thing. Now, yes, we're going to make this presentation live and in person. And let's be honest, I... I did one of these yesterday for a great broker in California. And at one point he flashed onto the screen about 18 pictures of his agents that were viewing our yeah. conversation. And I, I kind of had that look on my face because two of the guys were in t-shirts with baseball hats on backwards. Oh boy. And a couple of the ladies, I, I thought you shouldn't be on live right now. You should try to black out your screen because if somebody calls an agent in the company today and says, could you list my property now? You don't want to say, well, first I have to go get dressed. Okay? Right. <laughs> so the, jo the joke is at nine o'clock at night, we take off our daytime pajamas to put on our nighttime pajamas. I mean, hello, that's not the business we're in. So the virtual side of our business. So what I'd like to ask of your agents, they role play, they practice. Mm -hmm. They do. Now they do it virtually so they can see their own little flaws and their little hiccups so they can see how they're being watched and viewed. Are right. they smart? Are they, you, what, I mean, you have so many wonderful assets, but starting with you're always nodding your head. Yeah. Which I don't accept. <laughs> and I do the same thing all the time. Yeah. I want them to virtually practice instead of practice on the phone. I want them to virtually make presentations to each other. And if they do it, they will then become real good and beat the competition. Here's the big ace in the hole. We're going to have 4 million transactions this year, no matter what happens. Right. That's 8 million commission checks. How many of those checks do your agents want to receive? And if they have a number in mind, and then they go through the ritual of practice and performing, they're going to get their fair share. But at the same time, we have to understand that we're going to change our approach like we're doing right here, you and I. I, I got to tell you, this this screen thing for me is scary. I mean, I need to go to a doctor quick and have some. <laughs> well, we'll get you one of those big fancy lights, Mike. Takes the wrinkles away. <laughs> oh boy, I tell you what, I need that. That's for sure. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, you know, we we were forced to adapt to um, doing our virtual presentations, and and like you said, I've been doing them for years. I have out of area sellers, so you get on the phone, you present. But like you said, we still have to wear the appropriate attire. We still have to make sure now our backdrop looks good, right? You don't want to, you know, you want to make it look at least decent when you're presenting to a seller. Um, so I think we're all adapting and changing. But I feel like anytime there's a change, people just freak out. They stop what they're doing. And, you know, they, they feel like they need to keep thing, things, they need to change things so dramatically. And really, they don't. It's just a few tweaks, right? Yeah. You know, it one of the best books I've ever read, and you and I have read a lot of good books. Uh, there's a book called Future Shock, which was written in 1971. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the author's name was Alvin Toffler. And mm -hmm. I, I'm going to refer this not to sound like a big shot, but page 21, the first sentence in that page says, the only thing that is constant in our lives is change. Yes. And then the question is, are you willing to accept it and adapt to it? Okay. Right. So that's what you and I are doing right now. And that's what we want all your great agents and all the followers that you have in your great group to do the same thing. It's hard because you have to make a conscious shift. Mm -hmm. You know, Gary Keller wrote a great book called Shift. And it's a yeah. book that was written for his company, but it's a book that I read because 
we do have to shift our thinking in how we do business. So, yeah. Oh, and there I see my my friend Lebert Benefield as part of your group. Yes. Oh, and he was doing his prospecting this morning. He's one of my you know buddies. I've known. He was my first role play partner ten years ago. And uh, yeah, Lebert, he, I was asking about you yesterday, and I'm happy to hear that you're doing well. Congratulations. Yeah. He's awesome. He's awesome. So do you think that agents should plan for a substantial decline in their business or should they work to do things, you know, to add three times more of the activity and the action so they can sustain it? Good. I missed the last part. There was a little bit of breakup on our oh, communication. Should, should agents just plan for a substantial decline in their business and deal with it? Or should they do some different activities to offset a potential decline in their business? Well, first of all, you know, working out of your home, you have a lot more time on your hands than you had before. Yeah. You have a lot less distractions that we would have normally in the office. Um, Sabrina and I, our, our company headquarters is about to say 10 minutes away. Right. We work at home just to eliminate all the distractions that take place. So if they have a schedule, okay, and if they actually try to follow the routines that got them to where they are, they should not see a, a big decline. But here's the catch. If you remember 2009, 10, 11, 12, we went from 1.3 million agents to 700,000. Yes. About 18 months. That was the best thing that ever happened to this industry. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, we just, they were gone. Well, we're going to see a lot of that again in the next 30, 45 days. They may not leave the business, but they've left working in the business. Right. So, for our agents, yours and mine, if they will just continue to do their normal prospect. Right. If they're calling their past clients, if they're calling their centers of influence, doing just listed and just sold is a gold mine today because it allows an agent to say something positive to the neighborhood of what's going on. Right. And it shows the strength of your company in that neighborhood. So, you know, if they just, if they would just work four hours a day on an active schedule, they're going to win. But other side too, Tina, you and I have always said quarterly, we do a business review. Right. So we should be doing a business review for January, February, March, and then resetting goals for April, May, and June. But I'm going to ask your agents today, now do a, a review every month on your activities and your production for the next three to six months. A right. Monthly. Okay, because I don't think they're going to see if they're active, they're going to be doing okay. If they're inactive here and act inactive in the business, they're going to have a hard time. Yeah. You know, um, one of the comments um, here was, you know, obviously, Mike, you don't have kids. So there are people, there are agents now cooped up in their homes that have kids that they feel like they can't do their job. So what, what would be your, your advice to those people with little ones running around? Well, I have 46,000 children. <laughs> exactly. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm receiving 300 emails a day, which I'm receiving. Uh -huh. um, and I probably am getting, I would guesstimate, I'm getting 150 phone calls a day. Um, I'm used to working three or six hours at doing a seminar. Um, and I'm not saying this for any other reason, but it's what I have to do. I'm working from 4.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night every day now taking care of my family, which is all my right. clients and customers. Yes, you have kids. Yes, that is a challenge. Yes, it's more difficult. But see, you don't have to spend eight hours prospecting. Right. And an hour. Uh, and I said to a lady this morning, can you call two or three of your past clients in this morning section of your day with your kids running around, which they're going to do, just, but see, most of the schools are doing visual, virtual teachings with the kids. Right. So there's there's assignments for children to be involved in, et cetera. Now, ladies control our business because they're so good at handling a lot of situations. Right. A lady has a husband off and kids off on a home to take care of, cooking to do. You guys are the best of the best. Okay. And without you, we can't move forward at all. And I, there's a reason why ladies outsell men two to one nationwide, because you're so good at juggling. It's just a little bigger juggling act today than you've had in the past. But yeah. just you don't have to prospect four hours, prospect for an hour. 
and you're going to get great results. I'm, I'm excited for the ladies. Yeah. And I, and I feel like if you have, if you're lucky enough to have a spouse in the house, you know, and you know, it's just going to be take the kids for these two hours or even an hour a day moves the needle forward. You just have to keep moving the needle forward. So you got to, it's going to be hard, but you got to do it. Um, I had an agent say to me, what other services should we implement to attract buyers other than price reductions? Now I know your answer, but, <laughs> but you go ahead and answer it. <laughs> but it's so interesting because I have never been a big believer that price reductions are the answer. They are yeah. part of the answer. Right. And of course, the other side of that is, you know, um, I was talking to a couple of the Zillow agents that are big Zillow purchasers their number of leads have dropped 50%. Yeah. And therefore the cost of the leads have either increased or Zillow is reducing their fees to the agents, yeah. which they're doing in most cases. So I've always said the same thing. Prospecting of any type brings an equal number of buyer and seller prospects to an agent. Because this operate, the, the economy we live in in the US, which the real estate economy runs the US economy, period. Mm -hmm. What happens in real estate controls most of what happens in our economy. So everybody talks about real estate. So the basic conversations that you're involved in with neighbors and friends and centers of influence is going to bring you as many buyers as you need if you're willing to be open and communicate. Right. So I'm saying to agents every day that there's, there's a tremendous number of buyers in the market. But here's what's exciting. If they're accumulating leads today for the people that are saying, we want to do something when this ends, and they're putting those people in bucket B in their incubator system, 30, 60, 90 days from now, they're going to have more buyers and sellers to deal with than they ever dreamed possible if, oh, they're, yeah. willing to, if they're willing to communicate with them all the time. Yeah. And we have... Yeah. And we have some agents that say, well, I'm, I'm afraid to, I don't want to leave my house. And, you know, my thought was there are agents that have the luxury of not leaving their house here in North Carolina, we are deemed essential so we can. And so I thought, well, if you get on the phones and you prospect and you get a lead that needs to go now, refer it to a, a, another fellow agent for 35% or 25%. I mean, you could still generate an income getting on the phones and connecting agents to other people. So they're really, yeah. Yeah. There really is no excuse. I hadn't had a chance to tell you that my daughter, Reagan, who is 35, was supposed to get married. I think it was May 16th down in North Carolina. Yeah. To a wonderful guy. And we've had this big wedding planned for a year. And of course, now it's been postponed because of what's going on in the world. So we're going to do it probably in September. Um, and it's been interesting because you know, we've been communicating with this wonderful facility and this wonderful wedding planner and all these people for months on end to put on this beautiful wedding for 200 people and my future son-in-law and daughter. And of course, everything changed instantly. Okay. Yes. So I think the biggest thing is to the agents, accept the fact that things are changing. And if they would change with what's going on and remove the fear. So here's the question I asked a reporter two days ago. What is the fear that you have? Mm -hmm. You can identify the fear, Tina, you and I can help them overcome it. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. And I think, you know, I heard another agent say, well, but you know, you're, you're, you don't have the fear because financially you seem more secure, right? So, so we know that you've done well in your life, Mike, and you have that money, but there, there, is, there had to have been times where you had a fear of losing it all or whatever. How do you overcome when you have a fear that enters your mind, do you ever have that today still? No, today I don't. I, I, I don't even let that into my mind. But I'm, you know, I, I would say that if I have any strengths at, in my business and life, it's the strength mm -hmm. I have here. Right. I, I just, I don't accept a lot of those things into my life under any circumstance. But yeah. in the development of my company for 45 years, I mean, I've been under attack from everybody from NAR to every major corporation, right. um, back from some of the wonderful people inside EXP. I mean, mm -hmm. It's just part of the okay? Right. So I, I, I look at that as being part of what we do to continue forward and build a business. So I, I don't let the fears in, but you know, it's interesting, I, I, as I say, if they stop watching the news and they take and reduce their time on social media mm -hmm. and they spend a little bit of time each day 
three or four times a day reading a good book for 10 or 15 minutes, watching some of the great speakers that are on YouTube. I watch some every day now. I'm watching two or three speakers just to stay enlightened. Um, I, every night before I go to bed, I, I watch 10 or 15 minutes of a great comedian just because I'd rather yeah. be laughing. Well, sure. first of all, stage, getting in bed is a laughable matter. So that's one issue. Yeah. I'd, rather be, I'd rather be laughing than depressed. And these are all the things we can do to affect the mindset. But yeah. the, fear, the fears are there. I mean, we haven't been out of the house in 20 days. Okay. Right. And my doctor said, Mike, you keep forgetting you're 75. You're more in tune with getting this disease than other people. Even though I take 40 to 50 herbs and vitamins a day, which I've done for 45 years, I exercise every day. I'm, I'm really cautious. So 20 days in the house with my wife, boy, I'm the luckiest. You're lucky. Right. <laughs> now, yeah. has, has, the, has the force slowed down? Because I think, I thought the other day, what has COVID-19 taught me, right? And I feel yeah. like it's taught me that, you know, even though I have that burning desire and I'm a workaholic, it just is in me. Um, it's taught me to slow down, smell the roses, go on bike rides, spend really time connecting with me and, and the earth. I mean, has has that slow down in your daily grind? Has it gone away a little bit? And are you enjoying a little bit less hecticness? I mean, you still have people calling you, but are you enjoying being home a little bit more? Um, like yourself, I'm a workaholic. Yeah. Uh, in my DNA, I can't, I can't suck it out, change it, remove it. Nope. Um, but it's really been interesting. You should ask that question because Sabrina and I are, are writing down and jotting when this ends, things we would like to do. Yeah. That we haven't done before, right. or ever haven't done in years. Um, some of the places we'd like to visit, some of the little things. Okay. Um, spending an hour two or three times a week with our incredible grandson Sean here in Vegas and watching him take and watching him take his swimming lessons. There's a lot of things like that that we're gonna do we haven't done for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna adjust in a more positive manner. Part of that is maturity, part of that is the insecurity of missing things. But yeah. that's, that's what good people do. They want good results in their life by having more positive experiences in their life. And and that's that's what we're all trying to have. The biggest news that I can say, and my son Matthew preaches this all the time, this too shall pass. Yes. We, it, you just got to keep pounding that into your head. It's a, it's a tough one, but you got to do it. Oh, it, it is tough. And I think, yeah, we all survive. I mean, that we're going to survive this. We may, our business may change. Our lifestyles may yeah. change. You know, I think people are going to say what life was before COVID and after COVID. They're just going to know that. You know, um, but we do have to keep pushing and moving forward. And, and I know for me, I'm learning every day that, you know, I am a workaholic, but I am enjoying the little things. So like you, um, maybe I won't prospect as long, um, but I will take more time for myself. So as, as we wrap up, Mike, I mean, is there anything you want to leave our agents with? Um, you know, maybe it's a mindset thing. Maybe it's a, a great book that you feel they should pick up. Any advice that you would give our audience today? Um, somebody asked me yesterday, what is the best book I've read? And I, I've yeah. shared some of you, Tina, that I, because I'm a workaholic and, you know, I, I don't, I've never done drugs. I've never done, had liquor. I don't do those kind of things, but I am incredibly compulsive. And yeah. my mentor said, you're going to be stupid unless you read. So I have read almost 10,000 books in my lifetime so far. That's a lot of books. Yeah. The, the best book ever. Think and Grow Rich. Oh, my favorite. I've read it a hundred times in my life. Wow. I guess if I could say one thing, if everybody would just read one chapter a day for the next 20, 30 days, and then when they get through, read it again. And then when they get through, start practicing what Napoleon Hill talked about. Um, life will be much better than it has been. But you know, I am doing something fun. I'm writing out a list. And this is something that people like you and I can do what I am learning from this experience. Mm -hmm. That's the list I'm making today. And I'm going to share it at the retreat in July. What am yeah. I learning from this terrible experience we've had? Here's the one thing I've learned the most. And this is a shocker to a lot of wonderful people that might be with us today. We've learned how to earn money. Yeah. We've, ta we've taught you, you and I, to, we've taught them how to make money. Yeah. Now, now we have to teach them how to save money. Oh my gosh, yes. 
because see, you and I are sitting here today and I'm very comfortable. I don't have yeah. any financial worries. Okay. As do you. And most of our good clients don't, but I feel yeah. bad for those that are under that extreme pressure to do a deal, to make a commission check, to get through the month. Yeah. I feel, you know, I, my degree of empathy has never been great, but it's getting stronger for those people. So if you've learned how to make money, now whatever you do when this is done, you got to learn how to put some aside for the future, whether the future be bright or the future be dark. Yeah. You, and you always said that, you know, do the hard work now, save money, do not plaster your face on billboards. I remember before uh, when I, you know, first started coaching with you, I never put my name on or my face on cards, on signs, on anything. And I was really cheap. And I, I just, I never want, I never believed in buying the business because of your teachings. And now when I watch agents going, okay, get rid of the TV ads, get rid of the billboard ads. And they're, they're, you know, cutting costs. You know, I kind of go, I think we're good. Like we're good. And, and so it really is a comforting feeling, but I think agents after this, they're going to learn that, yes, yeah, saving money is key and putting the hard work in up front, um, building teams very slowly. I built my team very slowly. Um, way slower than most. Yes, yes, way slower. And yeah. with more success than most. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tim Wood, who is one of my very first coaches, mm -hmm. agent out of Big Bear, California. I remember on the stage, this is 25 years ago, he said, give Mike Ferry and Tim Wood one year of your life in coaching. Yeah. And we will give you multiple years of a high return. Right. And after Tim said that after the break, I remember saying to Tim, you know, that's that's a pretty strong statement to make. And he said to me, I only can say it because you made me believe it. Well, and it's true. It's so true. When I met you, I was making forty thousand um, dollars and um, and I, I've spent, you know, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in coaching in, in 10 years. And it's made me over eight or nine million bucks. So thank you, Mike. Pretty good return. <laughs> pretty good that's return. Yeah. Yeah. So. I want to say to you and to your team, thank you for being great supporters. Thank you for getting this organized today. And we don't know how many people will be exposed to these thoughts that you and I have shared, but we know that what we're doing is going to make a difference for somebody. And that's that's what it's all about. It so, will. Well, I, I encourage everybody. I, I have these. These are my Bibles. So I have them all. I pulled them all out from 2008 through 2012. I started looking at my notes again. And, um, and again, it makes a difference. So, so thank you for making a difference in so many lives. And I'm so, I'm just so thankful for you and, and that you had the courage to spread the message as long as you have and not change the message. Because, you know, a lot of people say you're old fashioned and, oh, that's dated. But you know what everybody's doing right now? They're going back to the basics. They're going back to what you teach. Well, I keep saying the only part about old fashioned that applies is I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you for today and thanks thank all you. for your help and thanks Dan for getting it set up so well. You're the best. Thank okay, you. I see you very well. Thank you, Dan. Oh, we can't hear you, Dan. You're muted. I I was muted. I was saying, Mike, thank you. And Tina, thank you so much. Guys, that's uh yeah. Tina just brought us a Be Different Mastermind exclusive event. Um, this is really, really cool. We appreciate your contribution, Tina. So let me just actually debrief with you really quickly. What did you make from that? You know, the thing that he said, you know, nothing's really changing. And um, for many people's lives, many real estate lives, like he said, you, you do things virtually now. You get better at your presentation in different ways. And so we've been adapting and, and we've been doing all our role plays face to face. We're doing our listing presentations. I teamed everybody up on my team into groups and we're doing a listing presentation um, contest within our group and then we're judging who would we list with through a virtual presentation and the winner gets a thousand dollars so they're like you know they're just scrambling to become the best they can be right now in this capacity and so i think like mike said i mean he's adapting and changing he's 75 years old and he's coming on to do these i'm sure they're not he's not thrilled about it but he's doing it to spread the message so we need to spread the message as leaders in the community to our people out there that, hey, this is what real estate looks like. Let me take you through the process of COVID-19. Let me show you what we're doing in our team to protect you, the consumer, because it's not gonna change April 30th when they lift the stay at home order. Things won't go back to normal like we all knew the market to be. So we need to adapt and change. So 
I've heard you, and I've, by the way, taken this and, and I'm running with this whole thing that we're in a life event market because yeah. I think that's a really great way to phrase what's going on, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, if you don't understand what that means, it just means that, as you will know, there are real estate transactions happening and the majority of them are the hardcore buyers, the people that really have to make a move, the people that went through divorces or that have too many kids in their one bedroom apartment and are just bursting at the seams or the people that just genuinely can't get up and down the stairs anymore and it's time to downsize or or the people that were relocated and are, need to get out of temporary housing. Okay, so life event market. Yeah. Tina, I've heard you say it, yeah. I believe it. What specifically, if anything, because I know your business has been structured in a, a, a way where, I, you know, you may or may not have had to make a lot of adjustments, but are there any specific adjustments you've made to connect with people that are going through those life events? Um, we haven't made adjustments because we're still making the calls, you know, so you'll see the people that are, are staying in the market, the people that if you call an expired listing and they say, I took my home off the market because of COVID-19 and you say, and you get back into it and you go, well, gosh, before, you know, if you had sold, where were you going? And they say, well, we were moving to Florida because we're building a house down there. So are your plans, your, their plans are not changing. They're moving to Florida unless they're going to sell that home. So if you continue on and you call, like Mike said, and said, hey, how are you guys? How are your family? My gosh, I saw that you took your home off the market. I'm a real estate professional here locally. And I'm just calling to check in and see how you guys are doing. You know, you have a beautiful home. Are you guys still, did you take it off the market for COVID? 19 and they'll say yes you go where did you go where were you planning on moving if it had sold and then you just start the conversation and naturally go back into what they need and then share with them the sales and what people are doing to change i mean nothing really has changed other than maybe the first couple sentences um that we used to open with you know and so it's just getting in front of people and being the guiding light and then helping them get from point A to point B. Now, if somebody says, well, I just put my home on the market to test the market and you know, I really didn't know where I was going, they're not gonna enter the market you know, in the next 30, 40 days. They were testing, they don't need to move. They have a great house. So next, you know, you're gonna go to the next person who really needs to look and you're gonna have to do three times the hunting than you did last time. And there's no script that's going to turn that non-buyer into nothing, a buyer, right? Nothing. I used to try to be, oh, I'm a good salesperson. I'm going to get them motivated. The worst thing you could do is try to motivate an unmotivated seller. I mean, then there's two issues, motivation and price. That's it. That's what moves and drives the market. If you get a more motivated seller than the three other neighbors that have their home listed for sale in a neighborhood and he's willing to lower it 20 grand, he's going to win. He's going to be the clear choice in the market and he's going to go. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you got to look for the most, um, the most, I guess, uh, motivated sellers that are willing to transact in times like these, cause they will be there. I mean, we sold what 350 homes this last, you know, week in our market. What were those sellers thinking and those buyers? Sure. I, I, absolutely. It's, it's, it's funny. Sometimes you'll see in these, uh, Facebook groups, someone might post the question like, Hey, I just talked to a seller who, you know, is just, uncooperative or, or unrealistic for this reason or is 300,000 right. over value or what might or what have you and the question is well what should I do what should I say to get them to to get them over the hump and I'm just thinking like that so much energy spent I mean you literally yeah. even went to Facebook to pose the question to why, read why? why didn't you just call another 10 people in the time you could have done that I know why because they're not going to call 10 more people they're so attached to the outcome and the thing is when you know how to produce and get in and grind and, and, and be able to generate things, you're not attached to the outcome. You're not attached to the commission check. You're not attached to somebody else's non-motivated ways and you move on, you thank them and move on and give them your email address if they change their mind. But, but yeah, I mean, when you're so attached to every uh, transaction that way, that means you're just not doing the activities to produce more. And so for me, I know, I know that I can get on the phone, speak to 15 people and get a listing. I just know that that's just what I know. And so it's a duplicatable process that if you learn the skill to get over yourself and, and get on the phones and go out there and help people, you'll be okay through this. You'll thrive. A few times later, when, when she said, Tina just told us, she knows she could make 15 calls and then go get the listing and, and she knows it. Okay. Yeah. So a, a number of things happened. She didn't just suddenly know it. She knows it because she did it so many times. She didn't make 15 calls. She actually made, I would estimate, 
I don't know, 20,000 calls at this point in your oh, career. Yeah. We've, I mean, She's made so many of them. Okay, now she got to the point where she realized, oh, if I make 15, I get a listing. So th look at how this is actually very circular. Once she realized that, her confidence level went up. Yeah. And when her confidence level went up, by the way, at that point, it might've been 20 or 25 phone calls. Yeah, yeah, it was more in the beginning. Maybe it was 30 or 40. But sure. because she understood where she stood, she's like, okay. And so now my confidence level's up. Well, when that went up, what happened is she expected success. And now all of a sudden she was getting the result in 30 calls instead of 40. And then suddenly 25 instead of, in, until she worked away to 15. So that's the way it happens. And then, Tina, I also heard you, and you have such a great wor way with words, right? That's really yeah. your skill set. You, you just keep it simple. You focus and, and truly become an expert in the art of language, of sales language. Um, you, you talked about when you're, you're speaking to these people, which, by the way, all of our MLSs, will announce to us everybody that wanted to sell their home before this happened. Yes. Okay, just go to your MLS and you'll find hundreds or thousands, depending on the size of your market, of expired listings. Right. All kinds of people that we know wanted to sell. So the conversation you're having, you're first of all figuring out where do, where are they? Where do they stand now? Where's their fear level? Where's their, where's their, um, their comfort level? Everyone's right. processing this differently. Some people are, hey, let's go do it bring the buyers and some people are, hey, don't come anywhere near my property within 50 yeah. yards, stay away. So once you understand their comfort level, you know, if, if, if then if they're not a right now person, that's fine, connect with them on, well, why did you want to move? And when this crazy stuff is all over, where, you know, where will you want to? Or you said you wanted to go to Atlanta when this crazy thing is all over. Right. About what Atlanta, what will you then be doing? What will Atlanta, and just so connect their past to their future yeah. and use the interim as an investment of, of, of relationship building. Yeah. And the, there was a guy today I talked to about, he had a tenant and I said, do you mind if I check in on, in with you every few weeks to give you an update on our market? Cause it's changing so quickly. He said, I would love that. He's in Florida. I'm the Raleigh person, right? I'm the Raleigh agent to help him navigate this landscape. And so he was so great. And I just put him in my little calendar and I'm going to call him in three weeks and say, hey, Dan, you know, he happened to be named Dan. This is what's going on today, you know, and, and here's what we've sold. And just letting you know our market's not disrupted as much as we think or whatever the, the update is. And they're just thankful for that. So just keep people, um, just ask permission. People are usually kind if you if you aren't so salesy over the phone. So um, I think we just have to master the new conversations. And I would say to agents, write down the objections and then learn the answers. Sellers are gonna come up with five to 10 new objections in this market that you've never heard before. So you're gonna have to learn the answers. Um, and then you know work your way through saying them without stuttering or saying, um. Because the first time you stutter or say, um, they lose confidence in you because you, you're just not confident in your answer. So you got to know the answer. And that's why you got to practice, like Mike said, virtually with each other and role play. Now, we heard Mike uh, talk about the length of his workday now. And he's taking yeah. 150 calls and he's getting up early and he's on the phone till late. And so I'm curious, what does your workday look like? Do you find yourself with less work hours, more work hours? Uh, what, what's been, what, what have been the surprises that you've found for your daily rhythm? Well, what's funny is, um, so my workday's gotten longer. You would think that I took more time. Um, the week before, you know, people are asking me to, can you speak here and can you do that? Well, you have to like come up with things to say. And I, I chuckle when you say I, I'm a wordsmith or whatever. I feel like I'm not very articulate um, and, and I don't have a huge vocabulary, but I have to write down everything, you know, to, to present. And then now I have to be the leader for my team. So I'm constantly reading things that fill my mind with goodness so I can regurgitate those to my team because many of the people on my team are not sitting here studying how to be a more positive leader. They're just you know, hoping that I can give them inspiration and we're leaning on each other. So I'm doing more now to fill my mind and keep it, um, keep it away from fear because we all go to a dark place, you know, that everybody has going, oh my God, this could be awful. And then you go, how do I get out of that? Well, don't be crazy. It's going to be fine. It's, you know, so you're like having these conversations in your mind. Um, so I think I'm working longer hours, but I'm also finding time to spend with my son and go on bike rides. And so my afternoons, instead of going on appointments are now family time. So that's been fantastic. 
Uh, you know, I'm in the same boat and that's been the biggest surprise for me is yeah. it, it almost feels like I'm working as much and as vigorously as when I was building the business. Right. Right. And so it's like, man, I remember, I, you know, it's been a while since I've had these 10 hour, 11 hour days. And, and so right. that's been a big surprise. It, yeah. it, it is beautiful that that family time is also there is also there. There's space for it. There's more space for it than there ever was. And so that's been great. But here's the message. I know plenty of agents on both sides of the fence here. Those that have completely retreated. Yes. No activity, waiting it out, hoping it'll go away. Yep. And I know those who, like you, like Mike, are actually getting at it that much more and that much harder. Yeah. Right now, the marketplace and each one of us, through our actions, through our investment of time and commitment, and our willingness to lean into this versus pull away, mm -hmm. being determined who's going to accelerate, who's going to grow exponentially through this versus what happens in every market shift where there might even be a well-known agent who you then look up and say, well, where'd that person go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, remember Timmy? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's in the marketplace. What happened to Timmy? I haven't even thought about Timmy in six months. What happened? To, you know, and so that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. you know, News, which is the good news and and so we're just trying to bring as much content motivation practical information as we possibly can to you to the people in this group um tina thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome the group find themselves on the right side of that yeah yeah well i'm excited i mean the thing is the thing i worry about the most is you know what mike said the people that entered the business in 2014 till now you know the business unfortunately i know because i've been through the bad times it was a lot easier it's been a lot easier so a lot of times you think you're this great agent because you sold 30 or 40 homes but half of those may have come from the great market that we're in so if you now go into a harder business and your 40 go down to 15 you've got to build your skills to get back to 40. And so that's why we're all, even myself, I'm hunkering back into my books and reading and trying to get more skilled to last longer in this market. Whatever comes of it, we don't know. Guys, if you wanna connect deeper with Tina, uh, you could go follow her on Instagram right there. There's her tag at call group. I'm over here at Daniel Beer underscore. You could obviously connect with us in the Be Different Mastermind group. Um, this is basically, Tina, you know what I've realized this group is turning into? It's like having a permanent ticket to a never ending conference. Yes. High level content, each conference of which could easily be, depending on the length of it, something like today would have been a few hundred dollars, something like what we did a week or so ago might be literally thousands. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thousands. You look at what Inman costs as an example. Yeah. And we bought it. So if you have a permanent ticket here yeah. to a conference with people that are 100% dedicated to keeping this thing going. Um, and we'll never, we'll never ever charge you for anything. The only thing we'll ask is let people know if you think that this group is good for you and it would be good for them. Go right now, invite five friends. Go invite five friends through a direct message. Tell them to jump in here and join us. And the more this grows, the more we can find people like Mike Ferry who are willing to come on exclusively for the group. So with that, Tina, um, thank you. And thank you for becoming a moderator for the group as well. You're welcome. Well, thanks, guys. We'll see ya. Go make some phone calls. <laughs>